What's up guys, it's Darren. A lot of salespeople develop a rituals before they go into a sales call. They may need to use a certain pen or have a certain outfit on or maybe it's a little bit of ritual that they do before they go into a sales call. They need to stand a certain way or do some sort of exercise, you know, like five push-ups before they get into a call. And they think that these things are really critical and keys to the success of their sales calls. But do they really work or are they just kind of a myth? In order for us to figure that out, let's actually start by talking about where do these uh, rituals, if you will, where do they actually come from? Uh, the reason that people develop sales rituals is because human minds are somewhat causal, right? Cause and effect. If something happens, there must be a reason that it happened. And this is especially true when you're trying to get better at something, like when you're trying to get better at sales, to sell more so you can make more money. So if you get off of a sales call, and that sales call you happened to have uh, had your hair in a different way that day and it was the first time you'd made a sale or the first time you'd made a sale in a while. Naturally, the human mind is going to look for what are the differences? Ooh, must have been my hair. I have to wear my hair like this every single day from now on or I'll never make a sale again. And I know that sounds kind of crazy now, but that's genuinely what people do. So if that's how they're developed and we all know that's kind of crazy, the question then becomes, well, why is it that people are so insistent on them sometimes? Some people will just, they will not do their sales call without wearing their lucky pair of underwear. And the reason that people become so obsessed about these things is because of a concept in psychology called anchoring. See, anchoring is essentially where uh, you tie two ideas together, right? Sometimes it's an emotional state tied to a physical object. That's what's happening with some of these rituals. Your emotional state, you do not feel comfortable, you do not feel confident going into a sales call unless you have your lucky hat, your lucky pen, your lucky whatever. That's why some people insist upon having certain rituals or certain objects that may seem a little bit superstitious. But do those superstitions actually work? And the answer is that it actually kind of does. Now, doing that, you know, breathing exercise or stretching exercise or having, you know, your little lucky object isn't what actually makes you better at selling. It's because of that psychological principle of anchoring. It's because whatever the thing is that you're doing or that you have going into a sales call puts you into a certain emotional state. And your emotional state does have an impact on your sales outcome. So do sales rituals matter? They do to a degree because they can put you in a better emotional state, which will help you sell. But if they do work, is there a way of making them work better? And that is a resounding yes. And by the way, if you don't think emotions matter about like sales performance or whatever, because you know, like rah-rah emotions don't really need to deal with that, there's an interesting study that has actually shown that test score performance for students, actually one of the biggest predicting factors is not necessarily intelligence or how much they've studied, but it's actually how confident they are. So the emotional state, feeling confident, will actually affect your performance and affect your results, not only in school, but also in particular in sales. Because how many of you have ever heard, confidence is king? So if you have a lucky object that makes you feel confident or a lucky ritual that makes you feel confident, that's amazing and keep doing it. But if you don't, then the question becomes, well, how do I anchor things? How do I put myself into this good emotional state that's gonna help me sell more often? And the answer to that, we have to go back to psychology a little bit. See, what's really interesting about the brain is that it actually can't tell the difference between things that happen in real life and things that are imagined. They've actually taken people and hooked them up to brainwave machines and they've studied when someone is imagining something in vivid detail, it actually produces the exact same brainwave activity as when someone is experiencing something in real life. And the reason that's important is because we can use that to our advantage. See, if the way that some of these rituals and routines and superstitions, frankly, uh, kind of come into play is because when someone makes a sale, they try to attribute it to a thing, and that concept of anchoring takes place, well, we can reproduce that artificially. See, what you can do is you can imagine in vivid detail making a sale, and it'll produce the exact same brainwave chemistry and everything like that as if you actually had made a sale. And what you can do then is when you were in that heightened state, that state of elation and excitement and confidence because you've just made a sale, you can then try and anchor that feeling to an object or to some sort of exercise. 
This, by the way, might sound a little crazy, but it is coming from something called NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming. You might have heard of a guy by the name of Tony Robbins before. This is what he does. This is what he practices. That's where a lot of this stuff comes from. So if you want to be able to put yourself into a better emotional state going into your sales calls, what you should do is imagine in vivid detail making a sale. And imagine it in enough detail from picking up the phone, calling them up, you know, seeing their face on the Zoom call, or if you're going to do an in-person presentation, you know, going to their office, imagine what it's going to look like, what they're going to look like. Is it a guy or a girl? You know, general, like, attire. Are they going to be dressed formally? Are they going to be dressed casually? Color hair? Like, vivid detail. And you imagine yourself going through the sales presentation, the things that they say, what's their situation, what are their responses. You get all the way down to the close. You imagine making the sale. You get that spike of dopamine, adrenaline, all of the other good stuff. And then you take that and you anchor it to something. When you're in that state, you smell something or you do some sort of action, something that's going to trigger that same emotional state in the future. And by the way, this concept of anchoring, of taking two things and tying them together, it may not really fully take place after doing it just one time. Don't expect you're going to visualize one time, smell something, and then be like, ooh, this smell now triggers ooh, that, that emotional confident state for the rest of my life. It's something that you may need to do multiple, multiple times before that anchoring really takes place and that neural like link is actually made for you. But once that is in place, then what you can do with this ritual is prior to a call, you smell the thing that has the unique scent that triggers your emotional state and gets you ready for the sales call. Or you do the thing, maybe it's some push-ups, some jumping jacks, some weird like pressure point on your hand or something, just something to put yourself into a good state. You do it before the call, It'll make you more confident, and it'll make you better at selling in that sales presentation. Now, I know all of that might sound a, little, sound a little bit weird, and frankly it is, but I promise you it does work, and it's pretty cool that it does work. But when we're talking about sales rituals, we would be remiss if we did not also talk about the types of sales rituals that are not gimmicky. The things that are like routines and habits and schedules, those kinds of rituals that I think make an even bigger difference for a salesperson. And there's two rituals in particular that I think you need to know about. The first one is after every single call as a regular routine, schedule, habit, ritual, whatever you want to call it, you should always debrief your calls. Before you go anywhere, you get in the car, before you drive off or you shut off the camera, before you get up and leave your office, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper and just jot down some notes while everything's fresh in your mind on what do you think went particularly well in that call and why? What do you think didn't go well? particularly in that call, and why. And this process of reflection and introspection on your sales calls is what's going to allow you to improve very, very rapidly. You don't want to just keep doing the exact same thing without ever bothering to try and figure it out and improve it and change it. Otherwise, if nothing changes, well, your results aren't going to change then either. The second ritual is actually about everything that's not sales related. I've worked with a ton of different salespeople, and what I can tell you is that almost every single one hates doing the stuff outside of the sale. They hate doing the paperwork afterwards or the follow-up afterwards, or they hate doing the front-end outreach in order to get people into sales calls. And the reason that you want to turn that activity, those things, those administrative or, or annoying things that you have to do, turn those into a ritual is because science has shown, some studies have shown, willpower is actually a limited resource. And if you hate making calls, trust me, I hated making calls. It takes willpower, every single call that you make, it takes some of your willpower to do it. Every single little admin form you fill out or follow-up you send out, it takes willpower. And so you don't want to run out of willpower and then stop doing those activities. They're necessary to you succeeding in sales. What you want to do is you want to take those things and turn them into habits. Because it has been found that once something is an established habit, you no longer think about it, it no longer consumes any of that willpower. So I would highly suggest and recommend schedule regular times. For all the things you hate doing, schedule them. And do them always at the exact same time or the exact same like scheduling or frequency or regular you know, uh, interval, whatever you want to call it, until it becomes somewhat unconscious. You no longer are like, oh man, I need to make phone calls or I need to fill out paperwork. You're just like, oh, time to do paperwork. This is just what I do. This is just what I do at this time. There is no decision use. There is no willpower use. And by the way, 
the number one thing that you really want to turn into a habit so you don't need to think about it, so it's just something that you do, is hitting the like button because it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Hope today's content was helpful. If you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead and comment them below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. And of course, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date on when I'm posting new content. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.